Node.js now supports TypeScript by default, but does it really? It's true that you can now run node server.ts and with the latest node version, it'll just work. But it's also true that node will only strip of the types and won't do any type checking. We'll talk about all the nitty gritty of the native Node.js TypeScript support. Is it actually useful, especially for production apps? What TypeScript features are not supported? And is it even okay to say that Node.js supports TypeScript? But first, let's take a step back and see how we got here and what options we've had for running TypeScript apps in Node. The most vanilla way of using TypeScript in Node.js is just using TypeScript and Node.js without any third-party libraries. What? Well, what this means is that if we have this TypeScript file called server.ts, which is a Node.js server written in TypeScript, and by the way, it's a Hype Conference Talk title generator, and we can see what it can generate. Anyways, to run this server.ts file with pure TypeScript and Node.js, we first use the TypeScript compiler to turn server.ts into server.js, and we can then run the server.js file using the regular node.js node command. This is a perfectly okay approach in my opinion, especially if we run TypeScript in watch mode using pnpm tsc watch, so that whenever we change our file, TypeScript will automatically take that file and recompile it to JavaScript. And then, in the second tab of the terminal, we can run node watch server.js so that Node.js restarts our server whenever the server.js file gets changed. So the TypeScript compiler registers a change in the server.ts file, then it compiles it to server.js, and then Node.js registers this change and restarts the server. I think this approach is really good, but people always want to have everything more streamlined or whatever, so they gave birth to the dreaded TS node package. Wait, why dreaded? Well, what TSNode aims to do is to simplify running TypeScript node apps into a single command, so that the only extra step on top of running regular node would be prepending TS dash to it. However, some people, well, myself included, had a really hard time making it work with ES modules, despite running it with the ESM flag or using the TSNode ESM command. I'm not bashing on TSNode at all, by the way. I hate when people do that with free open source libraries. Anyways, the TSNode project seemed to be abandoned now, with the last commit from more than two years ago. We'll move to the actual native Node.js TypeScript support super soon, but one last thing. Let's talk about TSX super briefly, and I don't mean the TSX file extension. What TSNode promised to do, which is to run TypeScript node apps using a single command, TSX actually delivered. I don't feel like I need to describe it in depth. It just works. It's even recommended in the official Node.js docs. Okay, one more last thing actually, but this time for real. It's worth mentioning Dino. Dino? Dino? It's worth mentioning Dino and Bun, which yes, aren't ways to run TypeScript in Node.js, as there are different runtimes altogether, but they support TypeScript by default. And since all Dino, Bun, and Node are ways to execute JavaScript on the server, I think it's fair to include them, at least as honorable mentions. And now on to the actual thing. There actually has been experimental native Node.js support for TypeScript since August 2024 via the experimental strip types flag. The only new change now is that the flag will be on by default, and I'll talk about what version it's coming to, etc. in more detail later. Anyways, the experimental strip types flag lets us run TypeScript files like this. Well, actually, we first get a warning that we need to specify type module in our package.json. So yeah, although we will need to add the experimental flag, we'll have to instruct Node.js to not use common.js and use ES modules for eternity. But after we fix that, it works just fine and we can see that our conference talk title generator is still. Whoops, what was that? Okay, now it's happily running and generating. As the name of the flag suggests, it only strips of the types. It doesn't check the actual types. You can see that if I assign a number to a string variable, TypeScript in VS Code shouts at me. 
But the Node.js server starts just fine, leading to a potential error down the line. And don't worry, we'll get to type checking in more detail in a bit. The Node.js TypeScript support comes with some other caveats as well, like that it requires the .ts file extension when importing files. You can see that if we remove the .ts from importing the TypeScript generator and trying to run the server, Node.js will fail to compile as it won't be able to resolve that import. And TypeScript in our editor also notifies us about the missing file extension as it knows we're using Node.js, which requires the .ts extension but more on TypeScript config later. Either way, being explicit about file extensions for import statements is what Node.js requires anyways, even with regular JavaScript when you use native Node.js ES modules, so I don't think it's the biggest deal. Another caveat, or maybe a feature, is that Node.js only supports type annotations. It doesn't support those TypeScript features that are additions to JavaScript language, such as enums or namespaces. You can see that when I turn the category from a union of strings into an enum, and then I try to run it, Node.js will throw an error. It's actually kind of smart, because it recognizes that I wanted to use a TypeScript enum, and it tells me that I aren't supported in the strip-only mode. However, if it was even smarter, it would tell me that there's another experimental flag called experimental transport types, which we can use to make Node.js work with TypeScript enums, etc. And if Node.js was even smarter than that, it would just tell me to never use TypeScript enums. Just kidding. Some people like TypeScript enums, and this is a judgment-free video. Anyways, the experimental transport types flag will stay as an opt-in. Some people say that not supporting enums is a good thing, and that enums shouldn't be used in TypeScript in general, and I can agree with them. I personally also avoid them, but I think having it as opt-in feature is a reasonable middle ground. What is now on by default, however, is the experimental strip types flag, meaning that with Node 23.6 and newer, as long as we avoid using TypeScript features like enums, you'll be able to run Node server.ts without any flags and it'll just work. It'll also be enabled by default in Node 22 which is the LTS version. That said, the TypeScript support is still officially experimental, even though enabled by default. Now, here is the deal. Is native TypeScript support actually useful? And can we even say Node.js supports TypeScript when it only removes the type annotations and doesn't check if our variables conform to our types? Cause to get the actual type checking, we need to run TSC watch alongside our server and we still have to add the types node and TypeScript npm packages. And we also need some specific TS config. I'm using the one from Total TypeScript, an amazing website by the way, but the three config options that are important are allow importing TS extensions, which does what it says, makes TypeScript work with .ts imports, which is required by node, but disabled by default in TypeScript. Then no emit, because we only want TypeScript to check types, not emit any code, as that's handled by Node.js. And module node next, to tell TypeScript to use Node.js ES modules for imports. And if it's a real world project, you'll probably want the TypeScript checked in your CI to prevent deploying apps with TypeScript errors to production. The fact that Node.js now claims to support TypeScript, even though it doesn't actually check the types and doesn't support enums, made some people angry on X. That said, the ban runtime or compilers like ESBuild or SWC that quote unquote support TypeScript also only strip out types. So Node.js is not in this alone. And in fact, Node.js actually uses the SWC compiler internally to strip out the type annotations. And the Node.js team thing type checking should be done by the user. If Node.js wanted to bake in type checking, they had to include a specific TypeScript version for every Node.js release. This would mean that when a new TypeScript version would come out, you'd have to wait for the Node.js team to release a new version of Node.js with the newly released TypeScript version, so you wouldn't be able to update TypeScript independently. And by the way, this is how it works in DMO, and it means that for example TypeScript 5.7 released in November is still not supported in the latest DMO. 
At least at the time of recording this video, two months after the Cybersec release. And to finish off, some bonus points about using the native Node.js support in production apps. If you're deploying to serverless platforms, it's still better to compile your TypeScript apps to JavaScript and then deploy the compiled JavaScript files. Because for cold starts, you want Node.js to start you up as quickly as possible without the extra work needed to strip off the types. And finally, you do not need source maps for debugging tools to work correctly when using the native TypeScript support, as Node.js does white spacing, a technique where the compiler inserts a white space for each character of the type annotation so that the code doesn't get moved around and no source maps are needed. My take on the whole Node.js TypeScript support thing is that it's a bit better for the Node.js ecosystem to be less fragmented and not require everyone to use a third-party tool to write apps in TypeScript, but at the same time, you still do need to install TypeScript for type checking, so it's only a marginal improvement. And what do you think about the changes?